In today's podcast, let's warm up your English with winter idioms. Let's do some traditional English language learning. In the Northern Hemisphere and in the UK, we are gearing up for winter. Let's take a short tour through the charming world of British English idioms that relate to winter. This isn't just any old English lesson. It's a key to unlocking your fluency. And I'll give you real world examples so that you can glue these English idioms into your mind. Learn to recognize them and use them yourself. You can use these idioms all year round, but some of them will be more apt in the winter. So let's warm up your English with winter idioms. Hello, I'm Hilary, and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. Firstly, would you like to learn English more quickly? And have you ever wondered why some people learn English much faster than others? The secret lies in your learning method. There are good ways to learn a language which really work. And unfortunately, there are methods which mean learning English will take years and years, if ever, especially if you want to become fluent. Give yourself the right method for learning English by doing our free course, The Seven Rules of Adept English. Need I say more? Our winter idioms today are a cold snap, the dead of winter, a snow day, a white Christmas, to snowball, and to wrap up or to wrap up warm. Let's start with the strange phrase, a cold snap. You'd never guess this one if you didn't know it. In Britain, talking about the weather isn't just small talk, it's a national pastime. A cold snap means a sudden brief period of very cold weather. Imagine the chill in the air. Picture the frosty mornings and wrapping up in your warmest coat. This isn't the context where you'd normally meet the word snap, S-N-A-P, in English. It has a variety of meanings, but basically, if something breaks suddenly and dramatically under pressure, especially if it makes a snap noise, then we would say it snaps or it snapped. A twig, a small tree branch might snap if we step on it, or a stick of celery may snap if you bend it. There's also a card game called Snap. And if someone's in a bad mood and they speak suddenly and sharply to someone, we might even say unkindly, we'd say she snapped at me. So to snap at someone means to speak sharply and angrily to them. But a cold snap in this context just means a few days of very cold weather, especially where that involves snow. Sub-zero temperatures are not uncommon in the UK in winter, but snow doesn't happen that often. But where we have a few days of cold, especially snowy weather, we call it a cold snap. Some examples? My roses were still flowering in November until we had that cold snap. There's going to be a cold snap next week, so dig out your winter coats and scarves. Or my pipes froze and I had a water leak during that cold snap last winter. Next, have you heard the idiom in the dead of winter? This dramatic phrase paints a picture of the deepest, coldest part of winter. But don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. In the dead of winter, the world may seem asleep, but it's just resting, waiting for spring. Vocabulary here? The word dead, D-E-A-D, -E is more commonly heard being used as an adjective. If something or someone is dead, it means they were living and they're not living anymore. So when you hear the idiom, the dead of winter, we're using it as a noun. And what do we mean? Well, we actually mean the middle of winter. You might also hear the phrase, in the dead of night. And again, this phrase means in the middle of the night. Certainly, as far as the dead of winter is concerned, I'm a gardener and in the middle of winter, it's quite common for your garden to look pretty dead. Lots of plants look as if they've died, even though as soon as spring comes, they revive. They pop up again and start growing. 
So this phrase isn't mysterious if you're a gardener, but I think that's where it comes from. In the dead of winter means in the middle of winter, when perhaps it seems as though it's never going to end. But of course, it always does. Now, let's talk about snow days. Picture this. You wake up and you take a peek, a little look through your curtains and you see a blanket of snow. In the UK, this often means a day off school or work. We're not very organised when it comes to snow. So it's a chance to pause, play in the snow and to appreciate the simple joys of life. The phrase a snow day was more of an American idea, but it is a phrase that we use in British English now too. And it's fairly obvious what it means. If you have a snow day, it means that you can take the day off school or off work because of the snow. My sense is that years ago, we'd have battled through the snow to get to work or school. But in these very health and safety conscious days, we don't do that. Instead, we have a snow day and we stay home. Maybe we work online instead. The very idea of a snow day may be difficult to understand if you live in a place where snow is pretty constant in the wintertime. Sometimes other Europeans who have more snow than we do in the UK are slightly bemused by the way that British people react when the snow comes. Everything stops here. It's as though there's an emergency. The countries of Scandinavia and Iceland, I don't think they have snow days. They just get on with it because they're used to dealing with snow and ice. A White Christmas is a classic song, but it's that dream of snowy landscapes on Christmas Day. In the UK, snow on Christmas Day is fairly rare making it all the more magical. It's a reminder that sometimes the most special moments are the ones we least expect. So a white Christmas means that there is snow on the ground on Christmas Day. Again, in countries like Canada and Iceland, much of Scandinavia, Switzerland, wherever there are ski resorts, I guess, then a white Christmas isn't anything unusual. It happens every year. But in countries like the UK, a white Christmas is less likely. It can be cold and rainy and a bit dark in the winter in the UK, but snow is less common, depending, of course, on how far north or south you are. And in fact, if you like betting, that's to bet, B-E-T, if you like to put money on a predicted outcome, you can get what's called betting odds for a white Christmas. Odds, O-D-D-S, means the chance of it happening. So you can bet money, just as you would on a horse race or a football match, on whether or not there's going to be snow on Christmas Day. How likely depends on where you are in the UK. So betting odds for a white Christmas that are currently being offered 10 to 1 against snow at Gatwick, near Gatwick Airport on Christmas Day this year, but it's more like two to one or five to two for the northern cities like Edinburgh or Glasgow. Anyway, that's a white Christmas. Another winter idiom. What about the verb to snowball? That's S-N-O-W-B-A-L-L. If as a child you grew up in a place where there was snow in the winter, the chances are you've made snowballs. This is where you pick up a handful of snow and you mould it into a ball shape, usually to throw at someone. Then they throw snowballs back at you. At least that's how we spent our lunch times on snowy days when I was in school. What sometimes children also do, they'll put a snowball on the ground in the snow and then they'll roll it along. The effect is that the ball of snow gets bigger and bigger gathering snow as it goes until guess what? You've got a giant snowball. And this, of course, may be the basis for your snowman or your snowwoman, a figure made out of snow. But when we use the verb to snowball, we're usually using it as an idiom. And it refers to this effect of the snowball gathering snow and getting bigger as it rolls. So the example given by the Cambridge Dictionary Online I suggested a few drinks after work and the whole thing snowballed into a company party. Or another one from that website. 
Public support for military action has snowballed. So basically the verb to snowball just means to grow, to gather pace, to get bigger, become more significant. And it's more usually used of abstract things. Here, like the idea of support or the impromptu party in the first example. Last one for today. Recently in podcast 684 on similes, I covered the English phrase snug as a bug in a rug. It means that you're wrapped up warm, which brings me from the simile to another winter weather idiom that we use in English. When there's a cold snap, people say to each other, wrap up warm or wrap up or don't forget you need to wrap up if you're going to be outside all evening. So the verb to wrap up or to wrap up warm, that's W-R-A-P. It means put on your warmest clothes, put on your woolly hat, your scarf, your thick coat and maybe even some thermal leggings so that you can stay warm because it's cold outside. Confusingly, we sometimes use to wrap up to mean to gradually finish something. An example might be if you're giving a presentation and your boss says, you need to wrap up now. She means you need to bring your comments to a finish, to a conclusion. That's to wrap up if you're talking about an event. But to wrap up in the context of cold weather means wear warm clothes. So don't forget, if it's winter time where you are, wrap up warm. Okay, let me know how you get on with these winter idioms. We love your feedback. And don't forget to take part in our Spotify polls. The results of these polls are really interesting. Sometimes we just ask the question for interest and other times your answers shape what podcasts we make at Adept English. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to us again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.